Hi guys, Kirk and Jay here with Kirk Giordano Plastery. Today, all about plastering. 18 gauge wire. If it's 18 gauge, you know I didn't install it. I work for this fellow, I do a lot of his work. Anyway, he, he likes to use 18 gauge. Um, anybody know what kind of finish this is? Can you get up close and show that? That is a knockdown dash finish. What is a knockdown dash? We're going to show you how to do a scratch coat, a brown coat. I'll show you how to use a go devil. Uh, then we'll show you how to do this. Knockdown dash is you mix some soupy cement, you put a dash brush in it, and throw it on. You can use a hand hopper too, but these guys did it by hand. It gives a li little different look. Then you take a trowel, knock it down. Knockdown dash. What we got here are just a couple of our plastering tools. That's mine and Jay's tools there. And I got my brother, Lou. Lou is mixing. Why is Lou mixing? Lou always mix. I hate to mix. That's nothing worse than mixing, setting scaffold, or tearing stucco off. What we're using is a premium, those green bags. And yeah, we buy our cement and our sand separately. You guys watching what we do, you're going to go to Home Depot or Lowe's, and you're going to buy some of their rapid sets or the other products, which it has the sand in it. All you guys do is add water. The difference between what we do is I buy bulk. I'll fill that truck up, I'll get two yards of sand, 10, 15 bags. We can mix that sand all day with that particular cement. The products you buy at Home Depot or Lowe's, three to five minutes, that's it. Most of those products, so read your bags. Anyway, Lou's about ready, and we're about ready to show you how to do a scratch coat and a brown coat in this dash. Then we'll show you the finish when we get to that stage. Bud! Man, when I was union, we used to piss those hod carriers off. We'd be screaming, mud! And they'd say, man, I'm moving as fast as I can. You guys, you got the easy job. We're doing all the hard work. Well, Brother Lou, he's, he's working around these uh, conditions here. This is like uh, a maze, trying to figure out. Come over there. Come on, move it, man. Give me some mud! Uh, anyway, come on, man. Make it work. Make it work. He's going to fill us up, and Jay and I are going to show you the obvious, guys. Put some water on your board. Why do we got water on this board? Because if there's no water on the board, this cement is going to stick to this immediately. And today it's damn cold, but uh, I still got to use the water from there. What do we do first? All us plasters start from the top first. We get our joint. What I'm doing is getting my joint first. Then I'm going to get the bottom, then I'm going to get the sides, then I'm going to grab my go devil. They call it a go devil, we call it a cheater. Uh, whatever you want to call it, it's to do the bulk. And when you're using that, you've got to use a lot of pressure. Alright guys, now I'm going to use uh, this, it's called a go devil if you go online to look for it. Go devil, why I don't know, we call them liberaches or cheaters when I was union. They actually were illegal for the union. When, we were, when I was a plaster. They come in all kinds of shapes and sizes, 22 inch, 24 inch. I had one that big, about that long, where I'd almost take half this off at one time. This right here, now I'm working my lats. I'm using both of my lats here instead of kinking up my body. A hawk, you're holding 15, 20 pounds of trowel. Man, it's awkward on the spine after 30 something years like myself. Now this, I'm gonna use my lats here. Perfect position and it's a lot easier, but I like to I like to get my first coat on, and what we're doing, guys, is we're doing a scratch and a brown. Now, if you're using a, a cheater, and you're doing a scratch coat and a brown, you've got to go really hard the first coat. Really push that stuff in. Gives you a good workout, man. It's, it's good for you. Now, guys, we're using a setter in this particular material, so I'm going to do my scratch coat and my brown today. But this again, if you're going to use one of these Go Devils, you can buy them online, just type in Go Devil. Uh, clean it up before you use it also, otherwise the cement sticks to it. We're running out of sand, and dang it, we're close to the beach. We're in Alameda. 30 years ago, I did use some beach sand. And that beach sand has salt in it. So if I use, say if I thought, man, I only need a half wheelbarrow, and I went to the beach and I got some beach sand, what will happen? Anybody know? The sand will be soft. In like eight, ten years, it'll be soft. 
uh, where it'll crack because the salt in it. What we buy is from the material yards, say like West Side in, in Alameda or Oakland, all the sand is washed, no matter where it comes from. Whatever, whatever ocean it comes from, they wash it. Why? They wash it to get the salt out of it. Anyway, uh, we're going to scratch this in a minute. We go to do the second cut. We'll show you that too. All right, guys. All about plaster. Next stage, scratcher. What's a scratcher for? You put scratch marks in your work. You go horizontally. Why can't you go vertical? Because if it was a cold day and we came back to do it, and we put mud on it, it could slide down. Plus, it grips better for the second coat. Do I need to put scratch marks in this? No, because I'm going to do another coat. My buddy Larry Beelman, <laughs> he bid a job and he didn't get it. And he's the best there is here in Alameda as, as far as contractors. Anyway, the people who did the addition, they did it. They hired a guy. He did the scratch coat. And this is how he, this is how he did the, the, brown, the scratch marks. What does that do when you do it like this, guys? I was telling Larry, I said, hey, your guys, whoever they hired, they're going to need a bonding agent for the brown coat. He said, dude, it's not my job. They didn't hire me. They saved a few bucks on the other guys. Anyway, I thought I got a big kick out of that. But uh, live and learn, once you do this, okay, to get that joint right. Boom, you take a float, feather it in. Just a little bit of water, feather that joint in. Now, I'm going to show you guys how to do the, the next coat, too. Of course, I'm going to do most of it. Uh, I'll just show you a little patch right here when we get to that stage. All right, guys, what I did was I browned out most of this. But what you want to do is brown out the rest of it. And with this finish here, man, I don't have to make this brown coat pretty because I'm going to throw a bunch of cement all over it. And guys, if you're using your tools, you can, I mean, you can just, you want to be pretty, you can do like that, but just pull it off any which way. Slap it on there, guys. Nice sticky mud. And what that does is, you fill your top up, I can look at it and see when it's full, but just for the sake of showing you guys, fill that top up. That's why we start at the top first, guys, because if you double back immediately, like I did, this is within a half hour, that top will fall out unless it has a chance to, the paper to suck out the moisture and harden that cement. Now, I'm going to leave this kind of fat and ugly, just to prove a point, guys. And I'll leave it a little full even. Now, when I was union, way back 20, 30 years ago, actually about 30 years ago, I'd be the Darby man on the pump. What I have is I'd follow the guy. Lead Darby man, they call it, the stick. Now, this is serrated, meaning it's, uh, when I hit this, it's serrated, so this will dry out faster. That's what I want. I do have some slick Darbys on my truck, like steel blades like this. No serration on it. Anyway, you want to take it on the side of, or here. I'll show you what I do, guys. Man, at the end of the day, we'd use our knee. i put my arm right here. It'd be like 12-hour days. We'd put our arm right here, put it here, and use your knee. Use your knee to help your derby because end of the day, you did 12 houses. Woo, you're tired. So, we take it like so. I mean, right now, it's early morning. I'm not at all tired. If I was tired, I'd be doing that, but here's how you do it if you're not tired. Imagine a wall, guys. Now you take it. Here's how I used to practice. I'd take it and I'd go straight up. You don't want to push in because then your wall will be wavy. You dictate the wall, not the other way around. If, you're, if you don't know what you're doing, guys will do this. They'll push it in, they won't be looking, they'll be pushing it in. And what you have is a wall that's all waving Humpty Dumpty. You pull it straight up. Here, imagine an Im invisible wall. Now imagine this wall. I'm pulling it straight up. Kind of like painting. You don't do this with an airlift. You do this. Same difference, guys. Straight up, guys. And yeah, this is a template here, corner, template here. Use it as a guide. You don't have to look. I'm looking at the camera, and I'm using the wall as a guide. You get some time in, guys. You can do that. But... In the meantime, just look at what you're doing and get her done. Now, I'm going to let this set 40 minutes, maybe a half hour, depending. Then I'm going to float it. I'm going to make it almost similar to this. We're going to throw some dash on it. We'll show you how to do that, too, but we're out of sand. All right, guys. Jay suggested I go into deeper detail. All right. It's been about 10 minutes. 
How do you know when that wall's ready? Well, you can do it like me and look at it, or you can do it by five, six hundred patches, spend ten years, or you can do it this way. Let's see where we're at. That wall ain't ready. <laughs> that wall ain't ready. When it is ready, we take a float, and I might not be able to show this because I'm going to go get sand. No, I'm not going to the beach. I'm going to the material yard. When it is ready, we take a float, and we bring out the aggregate. We float it. A lot of water. Now, why are we doing that? Because this is dash finish. Before you do a dash finish, you want to float your own work. Float your joints in, float them. And see what that does is it gives a sandy finish. We want that sandy look because then we have to dash it left. Now I just take a couple little pieces of dash and go over it. And can I mess up my own wall all day long? No, no problemo. What we do is we just clean this Darby off again. Never put a dry Darby on it because it'll drag all the cement and just fix it. Fix it. Anyway, guys, that part, Jay thought it was help you guys. A lot of you guys watch what we do and because you have similar problems on your own house, you need repairs, don't want to pay somebody to do it. I feel for you guys, so that's why we do this stuff. All right, guys, my dad's still out going to get more material, but this wall is ready. It needs to be floated now. If I wait for him to get back so he can show you guys, this wall is going to be real hard, and then he's going to have to use muscle to float it instead of skill, and then who gets yelled at? Me. So, anyway, I'm going to show you guys on this patch right here, I did most of the wall already. So you've got your nice smooth finish from your Darby work or whatever you have, and you're floating it. You're using, if any of you snowboard, you're using your float pretty flat, and you're bringing the aggregate out. A lot of water. Need some more water. And we're just floating it. We want that sand coming to the surface, making it real, real sandy. Just like that. Doesn't get any easier. And so now, this is going to sit and dry, and then it'll be ready for the next phase. All right, guys, just got back from the material yard. I had to get a new dash brush when I got sand because my other one took a uh, crap on me. You know, that's what happens, guys. That's what cement does to you. That's why every once in a while I'll spray my shoes. And if you guys do this, this is for you young bucks that just joined the union and you always ask me a bunch of questions. I'm giving you guys a lot of tips right here. Don't soak your shoes so that your socks are orange. Just a little bit so that this don't happen. This is about two years old. That's lie eats them up, guys. And you tough guys, and I see all kinds that don't wear gloves. Just a couple weeks ago, I said, dude, where's your gloves? He says, I don't need any gloves. I thought, that's crazy. He says, what kind of wuss are you? I said, I must be a smart one because I'm smart enough to know this stuff got lie in it. It's cancer, cancerogenic. Uh, what's that word? Carcinogenic. Carcinogenic goes in your bloodstream it beats your liver up so guys wear gloves anyway well where where was I at right here okay Lou brought me over a bucket of stiff mud I tossed in some water here I'm using a trowel all I did was soup it down made it like some Campbell's soup put that away and notice I did if you guys can see I've done most of this here's what a dash brush looks like how long will a dash brush last well that one I got two years out of but anyhow, you take it and you just fling it, flick it, flick it a wrist. I've done this 10 hours a day, every day for months on certain jobs where it's hand dash finish. That's all I did. We just go day after day dashing walls like this. I can dash it with a, a brush like this. Hell, I could dash it with a, a broom. That just takes practice. I could dash it with a hand hopper that you hook up to the air hose. Now, here's the thing guys, you look at it and you make sure you know when it's ready to knock down because there's the knock down dash. In fact, over here, they had a flat spot and they came out and said, hey Kirk, can you fix that? I said, no, no problemo. We just put a little bit of weldcrete, went over it and we take the trowel. This is called knock down dash. Okay, that's a dash. Now, you look at theirs, they put it on they knocked it down while it was still a little soupy so that's okay this is still soupy but the base coat is hard so you don't have to look guys just take that trowel and feel it feel it man just just feel it 
Just use that edge. Close your eye. Look the other way. It doesn't matter. Just feel it. Boom. That's done. And you look at it. If it don't look right, just go ahead. Give yourself a little bit more. I mean, I'm looking at it thinking, hey, not enough feel. Okay, I better go by eyesight. Okay, there you go. So that's done. This is done. Behind the bush is done. Now when this is painted, they're going to say, Kirk, good job, brother. Anyway, that's a lot of tips for you guys to take in all at once. But for you young fellas that just joined the unions or just become in the plastering trade, a lot of you guys call me and say, Kirk, be a little bit more detailed. We can't get any more detailed than this one. Anyway, my name's Kirk, Jason on the camera. As usual, we thank you for watching. See you guys on the next one. Once again, folks, we thank you for watching and I really enjoy all your comments. If you guys like this video, please click the like button down below. And also, if you enjoy what we do, subscribe to our channel so we can keep making these videos for you. My name is Kirk. And Jay. We thank you for watching. And from the entire Giordano family, we'll, we'll see you on the next one.